Anyway, so getting back to it. So dreams, dreams, dreams. I remember I was on the road with Shama. We were in the prairies. And I remember hearing California girl and just going, oh, wow. And just that, that turned my head. That's when I realized how wonderful you were. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your voice. And, mm -hmm. you know, I knew you wrote the songs. You're a majority writer of the songs. Um, you know, um, and then Fly at Night, of course, which I still play to this day. You know, uh, just just wonderful songs, just wonderful songs, and and then mm. then the band sort of drifted. What ha what happened? It, it it went from the Collectors into like, and the the first Chilliwack band had some of the Collectors. How was Howie Vickers ever part of Chilliwack? No, that was oh. the difference. Was okay. that one member not being there? Okay, yeah. so who are the members? For, uh, let's say, in your first album was nineteen seventy. So who were the members then? Yeah, so it was Claire, Ross, Glenn, and myself. Okay, and then that stayed for how long? Till uh, it stayed a dreams? couple of years. Let me think. There was two two albums, and then Claire left the group. Right, because Claire wasn't any part of Dreams, Dreams, Dreams. I know that. No, no, and and the third album, which was all over you and had uh, uh, Groundhog on it, was just was just uh, Ross, Glenn, and I. Oh, okay. And then we added Howard Froze. All right, right. Um, and I don't remember if Howard was on the album with uh, with Cr Crazy Talk on it. Uh, I I don't. I just don't quite remember. He might have been. I'm not sure. Anyway, well, he, he, well uh, all over you was '72, and Crazy the album with Crazy Talk, Ride and Hide. That was '74, so possible he was there. Yeah, but by 75, for sure, he was. And he played the solo in uh, Baby Blue, that lovely acoustic solo. Oh, he did, and, eh? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, so he, so then we were a quartet. Um, and, and we did so well with that record. And I really have to credit Ross a lot with the production on that record because he, uh, I sang uh, um, California Girl for three days, the Good. vocal. The lead vocal three days really? yeah full 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 days you know like whatever they were six hours eight hours i sang that vocal and we punched everything wow. and and the thing about it was it went across my break and i did not know how to handle that i could go into falsetto i'd be fine i could sing below the break i'd be fine but that song keeps crossing right, right. in the middle of a line you're going it, so, it so what's what's your break note around b c something like that no no, it's around F sharp G, on the on, on the guitar third fret high E, around there. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's where you you slip into falsetto from California. That's that's like a, an A G. Yeah, so so the E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, in there there was the break and I had a hell of a time. I couldn't do it, right? So Ross Ross was really patient. He said, and and it was his conception that I would sing falsetto all the time on that album, that I would sing quietly on that album. I know some people had said to him, if I hear another if I hear another record with Bill screaming, I'm gonna go nuts. Um and uh so so we tried this this was our new direction lots of acoustic guitar very soft vocals and lots of vocals and that was really his his thing he picked up on what i was doing musically what i what but i i was not that aware of it and he was more so yeah anyway, he, was, he was able to look from the outside in yeah yeah exactly out. yeah right. he said he said jesus why how the hell do you sound so innocent i know you're not <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's great. And yeah. well, then, but dreams, 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 and it did well. It charted. Yeah, it did it really charted well. in the states and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then from there, you went lights from the valley. Now, is that when McLeod came in? Not right away. We recorded lights from the valley three times. Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, I can't remember what the second one was, but uh, when we got to the third one, Brian was there. We basically you know ross said we need another i mean i my my creativity would go like this it was up and down and that's the way it was like i couldn't help it like i was not writing from a craft place i was writing from what comes to me place california girl i i, I never changed anything it just came out of me i just sat down at the guitar and started playing it and the song came out and that was it 
Mm. Same with crazy talk. It never, of course, that one, you can sort of imagine that. But um, uh, Fly at Night was a little more worked on, and some of the others were a little more worked on. But um, I would have times, stretches, where that wouldn't happen. I'm waiting for it to happen. Because the thing that I learned in songwriting was that nobody gave a shit about what I thought was a great idea for a song. They didn't care. Nobody cared. And when I'd sit down with my guitar and start, I'd just start playing. And every once in a while, like once every month or two or three weeks, something would come along. My wife would say, I like that. What is it? I'd go, I don't know. And I, I but I'd keep playing it because somebody liked it. Right. And that was my process. I was not, uh, okay, we got verse, chorus, bridge. You know what? We need, uh, we need a verse B to get into that chorus. Um, you know, and that kind of sense, I didn't, I just didn't do that. I just felt it. It came out and that was that, right? So, so I'd have down periods. So we were in one. We'd finished, uh, Dreams, Dreams, Dreams. We're on to the next album, Lights from the Valley. And I got nothing, right? I got these songs. I got lots of tons of ideas, but nothing that anybody cared about. So um, Ross said, we need another, we need another person in the band. And I said, okay. Well, now and, where, did, where did you find Brian? Well, our manager. There's we, a tour we, to force him in himself. You know? Our manager found him. He was in Toronto. And, and our manager, um, uh, whose name is not going to come to me right now, um, at the time, uh, found him in a bar, playing in a bar in Toronto. And he heard him. And he saw that he was freaking amazing. And he said, you know, Chilliwack, you know, the band that's got, you know, uh, Fly at Night and California Girl, we need another member in the band and, and would you be interested? And, and Brian put together a, a, a demo package of things he'd recorded on his four track at home, which was pretty damn good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, his pictures and a little bit of a bio. We were going down to L.A. to play the whiskey. Brian met us in LA two days before the show, learned all our tunes. He and I worked together like 12, 14 hours a day. Like just, we just worked and worked and worked to get him in with all of these songs. And, uh, and, and that was it. And he was in. And first thing he did was we played, uh, never be the same. Uh, and none of us had heard him play before. So we're having a rehearsal. It's, uh, Ross Glenn. Howie, me, and um, Howard, and me, and uh, and in comes Brian. So Brian's got his. He's got a. He's got a Les Paul special. So it's the flat. It's not the carved top. It's the flat top. Two P nineties. Right. He's right? got the TV TV yellow. Except at the time it was almost like a lime kind of color. Okay. It was older, and double cutaway, and uh, he plugged into a Fender amp. Uh, it was time for the solo. We said, you take this solo. <laughs> he just played this freaking beautiful solo. <laughs> and, and I was going, oh, fuck. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and, and Glenn and Ross were going, yeah. You know? And, uh, and that was it. That was the beginning with Brian. And, and um, so he helped pull us out of it for that album. And we, but we had other things happen. We had songs coming in from outside. Uh, outside writers like uh, Arms of Mary, that was right. uh, Neil Sutherland, right? I think it's Neil. Um, and I, uh, see, I, I was surprised to find out you didn't write that. It sounds so much like a song you would write. Well, that's why they they said you guys got to do this song. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds <Yeah>. like you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. So yeah, that's what happened there. And so we managed to put. And once our right foot had done such a nice job to get our left foot at least to go forward a little bit. Right. And and without falling over. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that happened. And then the next album, by the end of that album, the band changed completely. Actually, was it going into the next one? I can't remember. Uh, the band changed completely. We basically, uh, Ross and, and Howard and Glenn were all out. Was, yeah, because no, there's there's a period with John Rolls and Ab Bryant came in. Is that correct? That's right. And Bryant, so Brian and I got Ab in and John in. We were in. Um, Brian was really hot on Ab, and he said, "You're going to love this guy." Wait, just now, where, where did out. he find Ab? What was Ab doing? Was he? Well, he was with. Um, he was he wasn't with, with Crosstown Bus, was he? 
Prism. I'm sorry? Prism. Oh, he was. That's right. He was in the earliest part of Prism. That's correct. Yeah. He was on that first album. Yeah. Or at least he, his picture was. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say what went on back in those days. Jim yeah, Allen's did so much of that stuff. So Yeah. But, you know, and he played, he had his BC Rich bass, you know, and had all that top end on it and stuff. And he was really into that, that right. yes kind of bass. And, um, right. you know, and that was totally new for Chilliwack. We'd never done that before. Yeah. <laughs> and and then we made, uh, we made an album. Uh, which was basically just Brian and I and Ab playing bass. Uh, and it was, uh, oh no, John sang on it. John sang the stratospheric vocals. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, and Break Down, Breakdown in Paradise is the album you're talking about. Right? Yeah, Breakdown in Paradise. That album, I, I just had to go, we're just putting out a, a, a vinyl version of uh, There and Back, which is our uh, live CD, which was recorded digitally in, the, in, in 2003. Yeah, and which, we're, which we're sounds into, amazing, by the way. I have it. Thank you. Yeah, that we we're putting out a vinyl version now, right? So I hadn't heard vinyl for a couple of decades. So I got a machine, and I'm going. I'm drop playing drop the needle with all these different records from my collection, right? And I listened to lots of great records, ZZ Top stuff. I love ZZ Top, right? And 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 then I hit Breakdown in Paradise. Whoa, that was a great sounding record. That was an amazing sounding record. The 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 drums and the the way it sounded was just fantastic. Um, I was really proud of that, and it got nowhere. Got nowhere. And the reason it got nowhere was the record company went kaput. Was that was that when Shelley Siegel died? Was that before Shelley Solid Siegel. Gold Records? That, that's right. It's when oh. Shelley Siegel died. That's what happened. Was they were ready to go forward with that record? It was just coming out, and Shelley died in a moment. Yeah, right. and the same thing really, happened with Jerry Doucette. The whole thing collapsed. That the whole just all collapsed. collapsed. Yeah, all collapsed. Yeah, yeah. Luckily for Hart, I hate to say it, but they had yeah they had, they had moved on, or else it would have happened to them too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. so now on that album, of course. Now, did you know Brian could play drums in those days? Because he didn't play drums on that album that I'm aware of. Uh, he did actually on uh, Communication Breakdown. Uh, our drummer was. Um. Ah, uh, what's his name? Ah, the guy from Toronto, really a sweet, sweet guy, little guy, and and he was having trouble with uh. So. So Brian ended up playing the toms, I think, while while the other drummer played the kick, and they did it together. Oh, I see. <laughs> so so we started to hear Brian playing drums in there. Yeah, that's the thing about Brian. It's just like I mean, he was a great guitar player, a great keyboard player, great dr like the drumming. Yeah, on, yeah. On, I mean my girl the drumming with those hi-hat cuts and stuff that, that that's really intricate stuff yeah I mean, it's just incredible he was a and, monster talent yeah and not only what he's a men's mixed doubles champion and also a figure skater <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> the guy had a million lives yeah unbelievable yeah. What, a, what, a, what a shortly before he he passed away um Jeff Neal and I and him did this thing called Sailor's Beat named after his dog. It was at Club Soda. We'd play on Wednesday nights. It was a it was an oversex jam. Anyway, so that then Jeff ended up going back. I think he went out with Jimmy Barnes down to Australia. He was touring. Right. And so Brian said, hey, I got this gig lined up in, in uh, Abbotsford. How about me, you and Jeff play it? And I said, well, Jeff's away. He says, I said, well, so I said, it's okay. We'll get Brent Knudsen, right? So we got Brent, Brent to play and the three of us and I said, well, what are we going to call ourselves? He said, the foreskins. I said, what? <laughs> it's the, the, the middle of the Bible belt, right? He, said, he says, I, wouldn't it be great seeing the foreskins written up on the on the marquee in Abbotsford? So sure enough, there it is. But there's only three of us, you know? He said the whole idea was people were supposed to drink long enough to see the fourth skin or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God, what a guy. I, so I remember we, we would do these round robin songs where we'd play like, dude, something stupid like old time rock. And we were just playing crap. It didn't matter. The place was packed, right? And, and we would do those round robin songs where we'd, like, we'd play like a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then switch round robins. And, every, and it always ended up where 
I'd be on the drums when Brian's on guitar. Well, you know, the solo's going to go on for a day and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. But then there'd be other times when Brian, because his main thing was he was on the drums. I was playing bass and Brett was playing guitar. Well, I remember a couple of times we were, the first time it happened was really weird because I'm, I'm playing and the drums stop. And of course, the rule of thumb is you don't want to make a note of it. So you just keep playing towards the audience. Nothing's happening. He'll come back in. And I look over to the right. He, not only drums stop playing, he's over at the bar ordering drinks. <laughs> in the middle of the song, he just stopped playing and walked over and got a, ray, a, a tray of shooters for us and came back to the stage and gave us shooters. And then we kept playing. You know, and the wow. audience didn't care. It was wow. unbelievable. I think we held the house record there for years after. Wow. But yeah, well, he was he was a really good support too. And it, 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 the Vancouver music scene lost a lot of energy when he passed away. Yeah. You know, he, he was one of those guys, he frequented the clubs a lot and yeah. had a tendency to really super, when he walked into the room, everybody sort of was on alert. Okay, we better play good now. Yeah, Brian, yeah, Brian yeah, Brian's here. You feel inferior if you, if you were acting anyway inferior, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, are you really playing or what? You know, he'd give you hell, you know? Yeah, yeah. bizarre. Yeah. But yeah, that, but anyway, not, not to get, so after, now, I was, after Opus 10, which is another amazing album. And once again, it's just you and, and Brian and Ab doing yeah. everything. Yeah. Including production, right? You guys yeah. produced, yeah. self-produced Wanna Be a Star and Opus 10, which yeah. too, like Wanna Be a Star, I listened to that over and over and over again. I just couldn't believe how good an album that was. I believe hmm. it melts me. Hmm. And I remember I remember talking to uh Ab one day and I said, Boy, I said, I believe I just love that song. He says, don't talk to me about that song. I said, why? He says, so all I remember about that song is it took me two weeks to get the bass part right. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it was one of those things where it was just, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Nope. That's yeah, not yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like you singing California Girls, but, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. All, all those days. Yeah. So. But, yeah, he says, he says, yeah, it took forever to get that bass part. I said, well, it worked because I yeah. love the song, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, he did a good job. Hey, thanks for joining us. Check out our other vignettes and full episodes from a wide variety of guests for more great content. Please like, share, and subscribe, and become a member at socialenergypresents.com to access premium content and earn valuable energy points just for watching.